G'day Ziggy D here and welcome back for another guide in the 7 day Righteous Fire Marauder project. Today I started on clearing maps and I cleared pretty much every single map that I had access to. So most of the maps in the pool from level 67 to 71. So I did basically the low to mid level maps. And uh, I started out at about level 70 and I ended up the day at about level 76 and everything went really, really smoothly. Uh, my entire, my uh, sort of focus was to basically run each map once, think about uh, specific things in the map that are good or bad for this build, and then also to roll uh, as many different mods as I possibly could as well. So I started alking random maps as well and just running them with whatever mods they rolled on so I could actually get and test out the mods. And I'm so far collecting a fair bit of data. I want to I want to continue this into high level maps, but so far I have some observations to share with about you uh, with you guys about the build. But I really do have to reiterate, I'm very impressed with how this build is going so far. The actual power I have and the damage. I did manage to uh, find a bringer of rain last night and sold that for a little bit over an exalt and used uh, one of those exalts to uh, purchase a carcass jack to snap, uh, snapshot righteous fire with, and that increased my AOE and damage a little bit on righteous fire. And having that slightly larger AOE has made mapping feel much better for sure. So that's something you could definitely want to get into, at least for mid and high level maps, I think. But for the lower level maps, you can really go through on Righteous Fire, even without snapshotting and, and clear it super, super fast. Uh, there's very few maps that you will have any problems with. And uh, I was kind of hesitant about this because I've heard many things about Righteous Fire's uh, builds being not very good for mapping, basically. I've heard things like, oh, they can't do vulnerability, they can't do, you know, minus max, blood magic, they can't do no regen, half regen, things like that. So I was getting a bit, I was, I was like, oh, okay, this build's probably not going to be great, that great for mapping because you're going to roll a bunch of maps you can't run, essentially. But I actually discovered that there's only three mods so far that I can't run. And that's really not that different to what I usually run on most uh, builds. And when I play other builds, usually I will encounter mods that, although I can run them, I tend to re-roll them, for example, Temporal Chains. And uh, this style of build, Righteous Fire, can actually do Temporal Chains very easy with no real loss in clear speed. So I'm going to go through, firstly, what are the impossible mods, then I'm going to go through some of the other mods that I think have interesting points about them, and I'll go through some of the specific maps that I had um, uh, interesting notes about so far in the lo low to mid-level map range. Now the footage in the background is of uh, several maps that I ran with some of the worst mods or worst things that you can encounter on this build. So things like half regen vulnerability and stuff like that. Uh, so you'll see some footage in the background of me in kind of struggle bear mode, but even on those struggle-ish sort of maps. So these are the worst sorts of maps that I've done so far. Uh, it still does pretty well as long as you play the build right. But on the maps when it's very easy, and hopefully I'll show a little bit of footage like that at the end as well, uh, you, you clear ridiculously fast and have a very easy time of it. So let's jump into, uh, first, the impossible mods. These are the only mods I classify as 100% impossible for this build. Now, you can do some, uh, you know, sneaky shenanigans. Like you can run, uh, if you're running Blood Dance and getting a lot of Frenzy Charges, chaining Rubies and stuff like that, then maybe sometimes you can do these mods, but I really don't recommend it. It's not worth the struggle and uh, it will be incredibly dangerous. So the first one is Blood Magic. Blood Magic means you can't run Auras. A lot of builds can't run Blood Magic and Righteous Fire is no difference, uh, different. And it's especially true for Righteous Fire because uh, uh, the auras we run, uh, vitality, but most most importantly, purity of fire, are uh, very crucial to the build. Now you can run without vitality, but running without purity of fire as well is a bit too much to ask. So that puts you in pretty nasty degen status. So I don't recommend running blood magic at all. Next up, we have no regen. Now, obviously, if you're this build relies on regeneration, we have like four to five hundred regeneration per second. And uh, if we have no regeneration, then there's nothing we can do about that. Even using rubies does nothing to heal us. So basically, the build just does not work on no regen. Don't roll no regen maps. And then finally, minus max resist. These are the only three mods that I've discovered. Now, minus max is the same as uh, not having purity of fire, except much, much worse. You can actually go down below 75%, uh, even if you're at 90. So yeah, it's it's not good. You, you will not be able to sustain righteous fire with that lower fire resist. So these are the mods you can't run. Basically, if you alka map, and uh, say you're alking mid-level maps, a new alka map with one of these mods, then you either have to chaos it, so spend a bit more investment on it, or just keep that map if it's a decent map and sell it to someone else, or uh, vendor it up, or do something like that. So far, out of all of the maps I rolled today, out of an entire day's worth of maps, I only rolled three maps that I couldn't run, so or that I couldn't re-roll because I had alked them. So that was pretty good, not too bad. Now let's talk about some of the other interesting mods. Uh, one is Chilled Ground. 
Chilled Ground is usually pretty annoying, especially in indoorsy maps for most builds, because it slows down your move speed and your attack speed. The attack speed is the really brutal part for that, because most of your time in maps is spent attacking, like pretty good mob density in most maps, and uh, Chilled Ground really, really slows you down. It's a very painful mod to deal with most of the time, unless it's an open map and you can avoid the Chilled Ground areas for the most part. But uh, Righteous Fire, no problems. It slows down your move speed a little bit, so you probably take like a 10% hit to your clear speed overall, but it doesn't slow down the amount of damage you deal. You still degen just as fast when you're chilled as when you're not chilled. So easy mod. It's, uh, not, it's not like I would roll for it because it doesn't have a lot of quantity on it, but uh, Chilled Ground is nice and easy to roll. I wouldn't, I wouldn't re-roll a blue gr uh, map with Chilled Ground. You know, it's, it's not worth spending currency to re-roll. It's nice and easy to run. Next up, on a similar note, is Temporal Chains. I mentioned this earlier. A lot of builds don't run Temporal Chains. A lot of people don't run Temporal Chains. It's frustrating, it's super slow, and it like halves your clear speed. It's ri it's ridiculously bad, because it not only doesn't make you move slow, it makes you use your movement skills slow, but it also makes you attack slow, and that's a huge hit to your DPS. It could be something like halving your DPS. So Temporal Chains is a bad mod to run for most builds, but not for Righteous Fire again. Although you lose some move speed, it's really not a big deal because you're still dealing damage at full 100% in Temp Chains maps. So I recommend actually running Temp Chains maps whenever you roll them. Like the the slowdown of the you know 10% move speed loss or whatever, you know, the, the move speed loss, the 10% clear speed loss from moving, most of your time is spent dealing damage. You can just keep walking around and you'll keep dealing damage at the same rate. I recommend running it because it actually has a very big quantity roll associated with it. So go ahead and run those temp chains maps like crazy because they're great on Righteous Fire. Now, another one is uh, Desecrated. Desecrated uh, gives you a little, a slight degen when you stand in it, unless you have good chaos resist. Nothing serious. I wouldn't worry too much about that. But uh, it is, it is uh, helpful to know that that can be a problem if you're running another map with something else that's going to cause you to degen, like vulnerability. Vulnerability maps are one of those map mods that people said you can't do on a righteous fire character. However, I've done several vulnerability maps now, and you should see some footage in the background for some vulnerability map action as well. And uh, you'll take a slight degen in this build with your with standard amount of regen. If you're not using Blood Dance, if you're using Blood Dance, you won't take any degen. But uh, if you're not using Blood Dance, you'll take a slight degen. Using rubies every now and then and attacking mobs with Cyclone with life gain on hit is more than enough to keep up from that degen. So very easy uh, to run. Just run it on not too hard maps, basically. If you're running vulnerability on a very hard map, it's going to amplify it quite a bit. But for the most part, it's not too bad. Now, Shocked Ground is an interesting one. It increases the damage you take by Righteous Fire by 30%, just like any other damage source. So by itself, it's not too much of a problem. 30% won't take you under your under your you know region. But if it's on another map, like a vulnerability map, that can be a bit dangerous. You will take a lot of damage really quickly if you stand in Shocked Ground on a vulnerability map. Nemesis mods are another one to be aware of. Corrupting Blood is pretty nasty with Vile Cyclone, so if you don't have a Staunching Flask, which you don't usually need to run Staunching Flask on Righteous Fire builds, then uh, that can be a bit of a problem. I have almost died to a Corrupting Blood mob before, so that's one to be a little bit careful of. And then uh, the next one is Totems. Now, Righteous Fire doesn't actually affect Totems, so you need to take Searing Bond or some other skill like Ethereal Knives into the map with you. And Totems maps, because there's so many of them, will slow you down quite a bit. I recommend avoiding Totems if you can help it. And then, I don't think I've mentioned Half Regen. Now, Half Regen is another one like Vulnerability that people say you can't do on a Righteous Fire character, but just like Vulnerability, I've done Half Regen maps just fine. It's a bit worse than Vulnerability, so you really need to be good and uh, on chaining those rubies, and you need to uh, really go ham on uh, clearing the map super fast. And you won't want to full clear the map, you'll just want to do like a pretty fast run through the map, uh, hitting as many mobs as quickly as possible, and then you'll be golden. Now, in terms of uh, maps from level 67 to 71, uh, there's not too many maps I would say to avoid. Like, none of the maps have been particularly bad. Some are really nice. Basically, maps with uh, that are all corridors or narrow rooms are great to run, uh, or really open maps that don't have a lot of terrain issues. So things like... Um, dry Woods, although it's usually a pretty good map, has a lot of terrain things in it, and that will uh, interrupt your Vile Cyclone. Now, usually Righteous Fire is better indoors, but uh, on more open maps, Vile Cyclone helps counteract that. You can use Vile Cyclone all the time to draw the mobs to you, so that saves a lot of time. But as I said, in Dry Woods, with those objects in the way, uh, mobs will get caught on those and it'll slow you down quite a bit. So generally, the uh, narrow corridor passageway ones are a bit easier. 
The only bosses to be aware of are Underground Sea has a totem, Kuduku totem. You can kill him with Searing Bond pretty easily though. I just proc Elemental Equilibrium on him with Cyclone or Ice Nova and then use uh, Searing Bond to take him down. Pretty easy. Uh, a boss that is pretty nasty is Cole. Cole's a heavy hitting fizzy dem uh, fizz damage mob with close range and you need to be in close range to use Righteous Fire. If you have Whirling Blades, you can just Whirling Blades through him over and over again and uh, he won't, shouldn't hit you if you, do it, if you time it well. Uh, and that's an easy way to kill him, like, kind of slowly and safely. Otherwise, you kind of need to, you know, hit your injury and cry, pop your granite, and then cyclone through him, hoping that he doesn't hit you. It's a, it's a bit sketchy. Cole's a bit sketchy. That's the only boss, really, that I've seen, had any, any sort of issues with. Every other boss was super easy. So overall, I'm very impressed with the progress so far and how everything went. And, uh, the, you know, the low to mid level maps has been some, one of the smoothest mapping experiences I've ever had on a character this level. So looking forward to taking it into higher level maps and how seeing how 72 plus map goes. Uh, I think it's going to continue to go pretty s smoothly, but I think there's a good chance that there'll be a couple bosses that we won't want to do on Righteous Fire character in some of those high level maps. But low to mid level maps, don't worry too much. As long as you keep an eye on those, uh, those mod combinations and don't run any of those impossible mods, you'll be good to go for the low to mid level maps. And that's a lot of fun. So, have fun guys, hope you're going well with the Righteous Fire build. Remember, if you have any questions, feel free to hit me up in the comments below, and check out that Excel spreadsheet uh, in the description below for my compiled info on this build, including uh, all of the info I've been putting down from the different maps I've been running. Anyway, that's it for now, I'm Ziggy D, and thanks for watching.